What a preview do we have for you guys today. Is the Europa League final preview. Jose Mourinho takes on Sevilla, the team which has never lost the Europa League final versus a manager who has never lost a European final. Got that? <laughs> Euro Europa League, Sevilla. That's their game. I think they're at seven right now. Mourinho has never lost a Conference League final, Europa League final, or a Champions League final. One has to give. One or the other. Who will it be? Fingers are crossed. Should be for every Italian fan right now that it's Jose Mourinho's side and Roma win back-to-back -back European titles. What would that mean for the Giallo Rossi? Not just the next day and getting back into, you know, getting a nice shiny silver trophy, but also what it means long term. What could this possibly implicate going into the Mercato? What does it mean for Jose Mourinho's future at the club? What are the details of the players that could be brought into Rome this summer with or without the Champions League? These are the massive questions surround this. This is not just a clear cut final where winner, you know, takes silverware and then they, 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 they build something special, whatever, and they have a great season, so on, so on. No, there are so many financial implications and staff issues, and uh, uh, everything could be decided by this, guys. And it's, it's uh, I, I see cameras feeling sleepy. Okay, sorry. I don't know why that would happen. That was happening. Sorry about that. But um, I think it's okay now. I just saw my Wi-Fi kick in. But this could be one which really allows Roma to dream this summer. Let's think about best case scenario. What happens if Roma go on to win the Champions League? You have to imagine that Jose wants to fight another year, that he wants to go on and stay with Roma and build and bring in more players which fit his mold. And they will. The pull that Jose has had, if you ask any of the big players who, who <laughs> I'm just reading this comment here. If you ask any of the players or recent players why they came, they will always highlight the importance of Jose and the most winning manager of European nights, of European football, right? I think maybe Ancelotti has more. At this point, but Mourinho is definitely, I think, in terms of numbers, the most winning manager. So the papers have been absolutely nuts. And there's a lot of question marks surrounding the lineups. Uh, this is going to be, we're going to hit a lot of stuff today, guys. This is going to be a big um, preview. And I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I can see people coming in now. So keep writing your questions. And uh, right before we get into it, let's just let's just look at some comments here. Stomach pains are... I'm sure they are, man. You know, it's it's funny. I woke up today. I'm like, it's Monday. Oh my gosh, there's only two days until the final. Are you kidding? Now there's less than two days. It's 7.13 where I live. By this time, less than 48 hours, the future of this club will be decided. And yes, the financial fair play implications cannot be forgotten. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mourinho to announce his future after the match. See what happens, guys. Let's see what happens. Uh, I think it's time to actually start to break stuff down. So I'm going to take these branded stuff out of your way here. Um, and the first thing I want to hit up, though, is the predicted lineups. Now, this is coming from the UEFA website, as you could see here. Rui Patricio, Mancini, Smalling, Ibanez. We'll get to that. Uh, Salik, Cristante, Matic, Spinazzola. That I'm okay with. That sounds right to me. Dybala, Pellegrini, Abraham. So for two out of four sections here, I don't agree with. I'll tell you number one, Ibanez. I don't think he starts. I think Llorente is the starter here. Midfield wingbacks look fine. I would go with Selic. I would do exactly this. Cristante Matic, Spina, perfect. Dybala, you know, Sky Sports reports today that he's back and he's going to be one called up, but two able to play. But I don't think that he's going to have the legs... Could he realistically have the legs to be a starter, guys? I don't know. I'd rather use him as the secret weapon kind of guy, just in case Roma do burn out. Because if this goes into the 60th minute and it's 0-0, and then you have to take Dybala out, that to me is screaming problems. That I don't think would be a great thing, because then where is Roma's gonna goal, goal going to come from? Especially if this goes into added time, extra time. He's a guy you want on there, especially if this goes to penalty kicks. Mancini, Small, and Ibanez. I think it's Llorente. I got to really say, what do you think? I think he's, I think Ibanez is not in a good headspace right now. I think that his confidence is probably pretty low because he's made several big mistakes this season, which have led to goals, and if not almost goals. So I think the majority of them did lead to goals, unfortunately for him. And I think Llorente is the calmer center back. And honestly, he's looked really good. And it's weird to say that for a January acquisition to come on and play so calm and play his game. 
But if you give me like that do or die moment, I'm going Llorente, guys. How do you feel about that? Let's take a look at um, also Sevilla's lineup. Yeah, totally agree with that. So I just want to keep these comments as we as they come in. I want to keep looking at them. So would you start Llorente over Ibanez? And that's why. Yeah, man. Calmer, uh, cooler, is in a better headspace right now. And he looks to be flowing with the team really quite, quite well. I like him. Uh, oof. so Karim says he's not a big fan, not a big fan of Ibanez right here, <laughs> but, uh, he says Nasiri is very athletic. Interesting point. Uh, the center forward. So that is a player definitely to keep an eye on. He's somebody who's going to like to get flick ons. He's going to move into space. He's going to move in between the center backs, try and pull them out of space, make diagonal runs in between the back line. So Nasiri is a dangerous center forward. Selik has really turned around this season. Vincent says, and I agree too. He just needed some time. You know, he got a lot of criticism coming from a league where they don't really play good defense. He's had to adapt. And I think he's done quite well. Sam says, oh my God, just two days. Thanks for reminding me. Can't sleep easy anymore. Uh, the goosebumps of the final keeps me wicky wicky. You choose the best time to keep company in this Jose Roma. <laughs> um, if Smalling has his day, he'll pocket Nasiri. That is the hope. Okay. Let's look now at the Sevilla lineup. Jesus Navas, I should say Bonu. I can't forget the keepers here. I have a I have a bad habit of just overlooking keepers, but you know they, they deserve a, they deserve a shout too. I'm interested here because I thought the Serbian would be getting the start there. So we got Jesus Navas, Abade uh, Godeli in center back. Abade, who is on loan, I believe. Alex Telez takes over as uh, the starting left back is suspended. So the, the the Argentinian left back there, he has gotten a red card. I think in the 117th minute. Why Acuna um, midfield Fernando Rakitic in a two. So Rakitic playing a little bit deeper than he would have uh, throughout his career, more of an attacking mid here. We see him playing in the double pivot with Fernando. And then on the right side, Ocampos, Oliver Torres, uh, Brian Gill. So Torres being these, the kind of middle guy, that trequartista of this side. And then Nesiri up top. And we've spoken a little bit about him already. So this is, uh, this is a Sevilla side I think that anybody should be afraid of. They're not doing the hottest. They're not doing the best. They were in contention to be relegated earlier this season, but they've made such progress. It's very much a similar story to what we saw with Barry Leverkusen. And their road has been anything but easy. A much more difficult road to the final than Roma's. If we look at the teams, let's look at the last two. Okay, Manchester United, Juventus, 1-2. And they take out United. That shocked, I think, everybody in European football, and then they fight Juventus to the death. They should have, I don't want to say should have, but they came very close to getting burnt out, uh, blown out. I thought that Juventus played really good against them, and they're in much higher gear. It's just that one hit from Suso, and as we know, if we think about Bove's hit and his strike, sometimes it's all it takes is one big moment. So you can't discount the Sevilla side by any means. And speaking about the lineup, as we were mentioning and going through the Roma players, the Ribus de Mu, so the puzzle that the media is not totally sure of what's going to happen here. And you can kind of look at these diagrams as they're, as they're uh, explaining here, three, four, two, one. You can see on the left of the graphic there. And in Italian it says, Dybala recuperates. Um, there's the temptation to use him with the formula gioia. Formula gioia. That's a good Italian word there. Oh, I saw a ridiculous one. Um, in, what was it in? Oh, it was in Bove. That's what they wrote. I N B O V like in love, because if you say Bove in, in, in English, it would be Bove. So it was the most ridiculous translation Italian, uh, title <laughs> play on of words that I ever saw in Bove. Uh, that's probably worth a banner here, isn't it? And speaking of Bove, do we want him as starters? Do any, any of us think that perhaps, Maybe Smalling should not start or should not play in terms, um, should not play at the center of the three. Should it be Cristante and then Bove steps in to the center midfield position? I could see how people would make a case for that. I don't agree with that. I'm just giving an example of what Mourinho could use to do. But I will say Bove was just used as well against Fiorentina. And I don't think that he's going to start him again. This would only be Bove's like, uh, it's what 13th career start or 14th career start at this point, and to give him a go in a European final, well, uh, I think that's a bit of a stretch. I think you go Cristante Matic. 
Uh, here we got a comment from Samuel says Dybala is in. Dybala is Mu's secret weapon of destruction. That left foot is going to break Spanish hearts. So we hate. Oh, so we hope. Okay, let's walk through. I think that this would be good to take a look at some of the um, comments coming in from the journalists that are covering this match from direct. So let's go over to the websites now. Oh, I thought this was pretty cool. It gives you a little little blurb here. Um, over 30 pounds, the Europa League trophy. Silver cup on a yellow marble plinth. Well, I, I don't know what a plinth is, so don't ask me. But um, this is what we got for the odds here. According to the website, this is not bookmakers. This is just straight up what people think. Roma, 69% to win. I voted. I voted for Roma. Uh, Sevilla, 31%. Mourinho says, my concern was getting to the final. Sevilla are a very strong team and have great experience. Uh, in the run-up to it, we'll think about it. Now we are thinking about the Italian league. This was, of course, a couple days ago. And did Roma think about that game against Fiorentina? They did, but it wasn't enough. Um, ooh, I don't know if I can show that. <laughs> I might get a copyright for that. Oh, don't play any videos. Okay, let's look at the form here. Roma, uh, loss, draw, 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 draw win, loss. <laughs> Sixth in Serie A. But I tell you, Sevilla's is not that much better. And in fact, they haven't won since they progressed to the final. Lost, draw, draw, win, win, draw. 11th in La Liga. Not great. Not great. Okay, and we looked at the lineups. Yeah, we got those in already. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anything else I haven't, that you really need to know? Not from here. We're going to keep it scrolling. Um, you know what channel it's on. Let's get this one instead. Yeah, let's share this over here. Okay. Here we go. A little Bove interview. I think we should get this in. He says, um, here we got the first comment. He says, ever since I was young, I was really into sports in general, especially ball games. I used to play tennis pretty regularly when I was a boy. And for about five or six years, I played both tennis and football. At some point, I had to make a choice, uh, even though I was pretty good at both. Seeing how far I've come, I guess I made the right choice in the end. How did it feel when I first came to play for Roma's youth teams? It's always hard to explain those feelings. It's like trying to explain the feeling of scoring a goal at the Olimpico or getting your first call for the club. There are very strong emotions. On the whole, most people usually reply to that question by saying it is an indescribable emotion, but it really is like that. In the beginning, the most important thing for me was having fun. Then as you grow and you develop, you start to understand the significance of playing for Roma and you really start to feel like a part of this club. He says, this is a starting point. I've only just started, and that's why I want to keep going like this and to keep playing well. I have to be grateful for the trust that they have in me at the moment, and this is the most important thing. I'm very happy about it. Mu is a special person to me because he is a true person. He treats the rest of the team like just like he treats me, and this is the most important thing. If he has something to say to you, he will tell it straight to your face, and I prefer people like this, so I got on well with him right from the start. Of course, he has also helped me grow. All his guidance has helped me so much, and I'm happy for the faith he has in me got a little bove he's looking good <laughs> on the let's let's read this one we're not going to go through the rest of it he says how did it feel when i saw the ball hit the net questions like these are difficult to answer because everyone everything happens so quickly in that moment everything is a blur he says i expect a proper final it would be beautiful to win yeah of course what is he gonna, what is he gonna say no oh, i don't know i really know if i want to win not really looking forward to it like what, what type of question is that <laughs> i guess it needs to be asked nevertheless okay so let's go to the bottom here. Uh, Sevilla always are a team that always wins the Europa League, Mourinho says, during the media press conference. And we looked at media day. He says that team came from the Champions League. They're very strong and we cannot hide that. The certainty is that we will be in Budapest. We are not going to on a holiday. It's a beautiful city. The stadium is beautiful. I played there, but we are not going on holiday. Um, a little bit about Matic says it's a big game. And Cristante says we've grown in many ways. And these European finals show that we have maturity and group ethic. I like that word, group ethic, that has allowed us to go all the way. Zalewski says, winning is our goal. This is a final game that could mean a lot. But regardless of how it goes, we know that our season has been a great one. We are preparing for the final with serenity and tranquility. Wow, looks like Zalewski put on a little weight, didn't he? A little muscle there. Surely in his shoulders compared to last year. It's good to see. El Sharwi says, we haven't started to analyze Sevilla yet. I'm, I'm going to say that they have at this point. It's probably a little bit of a lie. Um, check out Pellegrini here. He's got the same protective headband that I wear. Glad to see the Storelli. It's pretty good. Not, not paid by Storelli, but I will say that I like their product a lot. It's pretty comfortable. Uh, much more than my, I think it's called upper 90 or total 90. 
the headband. It's like one of the first ones that came out. I think Peter Check wore that one. But this one is is pretty comfortable. Okie doke. Uh, Arago Saki spoke about the final. Legendary Saki says Roma have an extraordinary coach who has great experience and would be able to sell refrigerators in Alaska. His team takes care of the hard work, but they have a strong personality and never give up character, grit, a sense of belonging. Mourinho has been able to involve the environment and the group. Uh, then he says, we'll see a match between a team, Sevilla, that prefers ball possession and one, Roma, that has a purely defensive vocation in the Italian style. I say that from Mourinho and his teammates, you can expect anything, even a great feat. Okay, I like that. Uh, Marca, the Italian paper, carries the fitness updates from the training session and says long-term absentees, Jordan, Marcao, and Nianzu are all out on the grass, while Suso and Papu Gomez, who are absent against Elche, were back training too. Papu, baila como el Papu, right? Not on Wednesday. Better not baila on us. No bailando. We take that bailando home. Back to Argentina, boy. We don't need any of that sauce. Okay, let's talk here. Uh, Dybala, Pellegrini, Matic, Spinazzola, Rui, Patricio were, of course, rested, but they will all be back um, going into this match, as you probably know. Okay, Mourinho may have a problem on the left wing. El Shari's condition will have to be evaluated. So he did go off uh, with an injury to his thigh against Fiorentina at midway, the mid, at, the, uh, at halftime. That was a bit concerning, but I think he'll be okay. And if he can't start, then no, he will. He's starting. <laughs> he better be starting. He's in some great form too. So I'm happy about that. The involvement of two Sevilla mid, uh, midfielders, just a little caption here. So they lost to Real Madrid over the weekend, and they had a debut from an 18-year-old, Manu Bueno, who, of course, you know, they're trying to rest players. So they were getting them in rotation just as Mourinho was for Roma. Okay, um, a little bit from Mendilabar here. He says, if somebody, this is the Sevilla coach, if somebody had told us at the beginning of the season that this would be the case, we really haven't, wouldn't have believed them. But that shows the strength of this team. When things are not going our way, we always manage to turn it around in our favor. Favor. Menda Labar has thanked us for that, uh, Gudeli added. We've improved our overall style of play. We're getting results. Starting to play the way that Sevilla used to play a few years ago, retaining possession, a solid defensive line, and attacking the opponent's goal. That defensive line, about that, they're going to try to move those defenders above the 50-yard mark. 50-yard, uh, that's probably an American term, above the halfway mark and try to really hold possession and pin Roma back. We know that from the tactical analysis from two days ago, Sevilla are going to use their wing backs to really try to unleash their outside wing players, their wing forwards to get up and take advanced space, stretching out Roma's back three or back five, depending on the scenario. Okay. And then Gudeli says he's going to get a tattoo. Yeah, we don't really care about that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And this is the... Cover that we have here, just about, you know, Mourinho still has doubts over his lineup. Of course, he's not going to be like, yeah, I'm going to start this guy, that guy. No, that's not what's going to happen here. And we are now looking at Il Messagero, which points out that Mourinho's request for silence after the defeat by Fiorentina was part of his strategy. We did not do a post presser for Fiorentina because there was none. And he wanted to get his players out of the spotlight. He didn't want the media, uh, you know, digging in and unsettling them before such a big match. So Montella had quite a bit of an interview here as well. But before we go into that, I want to take some comments. See, we got a bunch here coming in. Okay. Dybala is in. Lorenzo. Ooh, Genie. Good call for Genie. Interesting there. Uh, I'm going to stop this for one second. I'm going to stop sharing. Bring this a little bit bigger. So I, would you guys put Vinaldo up there? If El Sharwi is not fit, it's a good shout. However, I, I I don't know. I really want El Shadoui to start. Um, it's true he does have experience, but to me, Vinaldum has not quite yet hit his form that we need him to be in. Vincent says, any plans to go back on the IFTV podcast? If Roma win the UEL, you should meet up with them to film a show. I'd love to. I don't. I haven't heard from them. Um, if you speak to them or write in any comments, let them know too. Uh, I don't want to feel like I'm bothering them at all to come back on. They're a short 30 minute ride away, not too far where they film the podcasts. Uh, I'm not sure why, why, but yeah, give them a, give them a talking to. Um, but I'll, maybe I should also reach out to Michael too. He organizes that stuff and let him know if, if they need me, I'll try to organize to get over there. 
My midfield defensive trio is Matic, Bove, and Cristante. Matic the pivot, flanked by Bove and Cristante. Bove is young energy, Cristante intelligent, Matic the intelligence plus the experience. Samuel says here, you know, if it's a 4-3-3, I like this. I like it a lot. It's some, I, I, Bove could definitely advance here in more of a number eight role. Matic and Cristante more as holders. It could be good. Yeah, that could be something going forward. We saw the 4-2-3-1 against Fiorentina. That was nice to see. I don't know. I doubt uh, Mourinho is going to go with that in the final, but it's a it's an interesting prospect going forward. If we win, Mike says, I think Mike is a first-time writer, if not uh, two or three times he's been in here. Nice seeing him. If we lose, we're in the Conference League. Unless Juve get banned from Europa, then if we lose, we're in Europa. If we win, then the Champions League. Let's focus on that right now, on that comment. If we win, we're going to be talking a lot over the summer. We're going to be like, Roma can get this player now. They can appropriate the funds here. They can cut this. They can aim for this going into next season. So that's when I'm really looking forward to it. And it would be hard for me to fathom a loss. So I don't even want to like put that energy out there. I do feel that this Roma, I saw the word ethic pop up before. Who used it? Was it Matic? I really feel like they have it in them. Like they have the strength, the integrity, the maturity, the the character and composition as a team to really go and take this to Sevilla. I don't care how many league, Europa leagues that they've won. I don't care if they won seven in a row, to be honest with you, because once you hit the point zero zero one on that scoreboard, everything changes. And then it's a completely different match. And you know who's going to win the better team. And I got to think that Roma have an edge here. And I want to see it shine through. Roma's strength, kind of like what I was just saying. I didn't even see this comment. Family bond and faith in Jose. This is the thing that Mourinho brings. Push the pressure off of the players. Absorb it. Know how to handle the media. Because media pressure seriously affects young people. I'm telling you, the average age of this squad is around 26 and a half. 26, 25, 24, down to the teenagers. That's really young. And it's hard. I know it's, you could say, oh, they're professionals. It doesn't matter. There's still the human element of it. And being able to deflect so much of that off of the boys is of the utmost importance when you're trying to achieve big objectives, guys. Would Mourinho be top three managers? Yes, Ishmael. Yes. Top three managers in Roma's history if Mourinho wins on Wednesday. <laughs> He's already top three. If he'd be number one, if he wins, is he number one? Is he number one? Ah, well, we'll evaluate that on Wednesday. That's a really good, that's an episode within itself, Vincent. Ishmael says, Wayne, try and get on Eunice Talks football show. Man loves Jose more than his kids. I've never heard of Eunice. It'd be interesting. Uh, Vincent, I don't speak to ITV, but one of their recent podcasts, they said they want to bring you back on. Oh, cool. Maybe I'll reach out then. Um, we can't change the way we play now with three defenders is the best. Yeah, I don't think that Mourinho reverts to a four. Pot one of Champions League would be crazy. Yeah, man. You know, I think the minimum right now is 60 million euros just for qualifying for the Champions League. It's night and day. If you're interested in the financial aspect of football, check out Swiss Ramble. Check out the ones he's done on Roma and how it affects the balance, the balance sheet and the books. Uh, seriously, incredible stuff by Swiss Ramble. He's an accountant. Tammy was playing center midfield in Leverkusen. He looked like Pogba. Um, yes, he dropped very deep. He did. That's one thing. That yes, Belotti should have more goals. Abraham should have more goals. But the one thing that what has made them take space away from goal, and we're going to get that now in the Montella interview. He says he talks exactly about this. Is that because of the defensive duties of the strikers, they act as the first line of defense. And what happens with that is their beginning point is so much different from a player like Giroud. Let's say Giroud hangs out, man. He's got the life. This dude hangs out. Max 18 yards from the keeper's box, puts a head in, gets a flick on. Oh, I got to go. Runs to the San Siro and uh, the Curva, and he's the man. Like, yeah, that's the ultimate job, I think. Of course, when you don't score, it's a different thing. But uh, Cristante, yeah, ethic. There we go. Thank you. Romo to win to no betting tips. Uh, Sevilla love to play attacking football and get a lot of shots on target every game. I'm really scared how Rui would deal with this. The defense really needs to step up, so Rui doesn't need to sweat. I agree. We need the Rui from Tirana. Yeah, we need Conference League finalist uh, champion <laughs> in gold, Rui. That's exactly who we need. 
Let's go back to Montella here, guys. I'm going to take your screen one second. Um, I saw that comment come in from, from Sam just now. We'll bounce back to that after we cover this here. Uh, Montella, Montella, here we go. Okay, cool. So if you've not been a fan of Roma that long, I will tell you that Montella is one of the best goal scorers to ever wear this jersey. He is somebody I worshipped as a kid, man, as a teenager. I loved what his left boot could do. He scored at will. Speaking about Giroud, if Giroud is here, Montella was, was way up here. And he said, Mourinho has left his mark. He spoke to Radio Rai and said, the proof is the sold-out crowds at the stadium every match. He said, Lado Planino, the little airplane. With him, we have returned to breathe the enthusiasm of the early 2000s, which luckily I experienced as well. Mourinho is a winning man. In Roma's nearly 100-year history, we made two finals in two years. He is a genius in this respect. You can see Montella's airplane celebration going on here. I don't know Francesco Corda. Um, reporting from Budapest says, uh, Montella also says, Roma have a precise identity, a very compact team. They defend with order, patience, and sacrifice. Roma's center of gravity is not very high, and this has been one of the reasons why, in my opinion, both Abraham and Belotti are unable to get going. Okay, Nella has the distinct honor of being the one of the players who was on the Scudetto winning team in 1983, but then lost the European final, the ch essentially now the Champions League final, against Liverpool the following year on penalty kicks. He spoke to Il Giornale and he said, the best feeling you get from playing these games is that you have earned this and that everyone is watching you. My memory is of the right kind of tension, even though you can't wait to get onto the pitch as soon as possible so as not to build up anxiety and the careful prep of the whole environment, knowing that you are playing in another capital city with a different crowd. Speaking of the crowd, Il Romanista reported today that over 15,000 Roma fans will be making it into Budapest. There's also something like 20 or 30 flights leaving from Sevilla into Budapest with Sevilla fans. They're expected to be about 12,000. But I guarantee you the one voice that you're going to hear above others, the one voice that will be echoing that stadium is the Giallorossi supporters. You can bank on that one, guys. Okay. Uh, Mourinho has made many boys grow a lot mentally and character-wise. In that sense, he's already won. I think all the his players know what to do. We can't expect him to play like City, but in Europe, he has deservedly progressed thanks to good defensive organization, as well as the sacrifice of everyone on the pitch. The Puskas Arena. That's the word I was looking for, the Puskas. Yeah, good one. Spinatola made it to, through today's session with the rest of the squad, uh, left the field due to a muscle strain against Leverkusen. He's doing good. And now no problems for El Shadoui, it's reported. I didn't see that one come up. That one's the most recent here. And that is very nice. Very good stuff to hear. So Al Shadoui's good. Spinazzola is good. Anthony Taylor, he is the referee. What else do we got? We went through the Bove interview. We can X that out on my screen here. Um, we went through starting lineups. We should probably look at them a little bit more again. All right. It comes down to this 90 minutes, guys. Back-to-back -back trophies for Roma or another Europa League in the bag for Sevilla, the six-time champions. This will be their seventh. Oh, the Jalorossi are going to be need, need a lot. They're going to need a great defensive performance, a lot of heart. Dybala's goals are going to have to hopefully pave this down. <laughs> pave this down. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, really make the difference here. If Dybala comes in, guys, I think it could be a seriously different type of game. <sighs> How are you feeling, man? You know, it's it's really starting to to hit me now. Uh, yeah, we can go over the Toti interview as well. That's a good call. I think we should pull that up. Great shout here. And I've got that transcribed on my Twitter. So let's go straight to that. Yeah, Toti interview. He spoke today to UEFA's website. And he spoke about Mourinho, what it means to, uh, what it means to be a, a captain in Rome and how important it is that somebody like Pellegrini and De Rossi lead this team, have led this team over the years. So let's go share screen. And here's my Twitter. All right, let's get this up. So, oh, by the way, these call-ups are absolutely insane by Mancini. There's so many other players. Like, uh, if you look at the U21 team, half that team should be in here. Why are we still calling up, let's see, Jorginho? Pessina. Pessina's not a Zodi player. Please, guys. Zaniola, who's done absolutely nothing. 
been awful in Turkey. Verratti, who's getting older, he's part of the last wave. Verratti, uh, Immobile still. Are you are you kidding me, man? Zakani deserves it. Raspadori deserves it. Defense. Where is Mancini? Where is Gianluca Mancini, man? What are you, what are you doing to me here? This is not the future. Uh, Gatti, please. Florenzi, buongiorno. Uh, where is Balzani? Where is Fabiano Parisi? At least Gnonto's there. But th there's a lot of shouts here. I think that really, I don't know what Mancini is thinking. This is this is almost criminal. Okay. Yes, yeah, Sky Sports reported that Dybala will be there, by the way. I think a, a lot of us have, have seen that by now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading some of the comments there. Yeah, let's look quickly at the Totti interview. Two European European finals in two years for Roma. He said, it's a wonderful feeling to see Roma in the final. As a Roma fan, it's one of the best things, reaching two consecutive finals, an indescribable feeling. It's the first time this has happened in many years. Let's hope everything goes in the right direction. It will be a tough game and anything can happen. Mourinho, Sevilla have more experience in these finals. They have played in six and won them all. Sooner or later, maybe with a little bad luck, they will lose. With Mourinho, we have this fantastic opportunity. He is a coach with a lot of experience in these types of games, so he will deal with it in the best possible way. With this type of manager, it is easier to win. He has a strong personality and is used to winning. He has instilled the winning mentality in the team. I have spoken to him often and have dealt with him in the past. I would have liked to have had him as a technician or coach. Unfortunately, he had other opportunities. On Bove, a good young guy, good family, always tries to do the best for the team and behaves in the right way demonstrating his skills and know that knows that the team needs him too. Mourinho knows that he can get him, that he can give and has put him on the pitch in difficult matches like this one against Leverkusen where among other things he scored the decisive goal for qualification. What makes you De Rossi and Pellegrini different from the other captains? He says a player born in Rome who becomes captain of Roma is also an important thing for the fans. It is essential that Roma are led by such a figure in Europe too. You only played for Roma in your career. Today, such a choice can be complicated. Everyone can do what they want and what they consider most convenient for themselves. For Roma fans, always playing for Roma means everything. They give you so much love. There it is. It's a close dialogue with them. It's something you carry with you over time. Do you regret not winning in Europe with Roma? Since at the time, they were very strong teams. It was difficult for us to keep up with them. It's true. Having said that, I'm happy with my career and with what I've done. What I've achieved, I've done with Roma, which is the team that I've always been in love with. It's my biggest win. And this is the goal. I put as a picture here where he became the oldest goal scorer in the Champions League, scoring against Hart here with a little chip, some fish and chips, as the headline read that I remember. Oh, man, good memories there of uh, Francesco Totti. Uh, okay. By the way, this is the kit that they'll be wearing too. You could see the insignia here, final of Budapest up there. It looks really pretty with the SPQR on it as well. That's really nice, sharp-looking kit there. I'm sure that's going to be one that the collectors are really fiending for. Okay, we'll stop sharing there. Um, we'll get to some comments here again. Samuel says, Roma fans are the best worldwide. Very respectful of a good coach. Unlike Tottenham and some other teams that are so impatient and allow media to make them believe Jose is negative Roma fans. Yeah, really embraced in Rome, internationally. Across the board, Roma fans really love Jose, and it's it's felt back. I think like it's, you know, it's it's hard to define things you can't see, but something that you can truly feel is the love and desire for him to come to this team and build something proper. They'll always say he's like, I know this isn't my Inter Milan, uh, this isn't my Real Madrid. I don't have those types of players. What I do have is guys who work their socks off and really commit for the greater good. That is Roma. That's blessed. That's blessed, man. Okay, I'm just looking uh, at some other comments here. Maybe I skipped a few. Roma should be respected at this point. To get to two European finals in a row is a show of strength, courage, and resilience. This Roma knows how to suffer even if they lack things. Yes, we have the special one. And Diego's worried about um, and Nasiri. If we play deep, yep, he's scary. I'm not going to lie. It's a good center forward there. When we win Europe, let's hope. I think we'll win. Well, we know what happens with Jose's, Jose's future on Wednesday, I think. Okay. I'm with a bad feeling that Mourinho is leaving. Doesn't matter if we win or not, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see. I think that if we won't spend too much, even if we win, I think that happens. I fear Jose will leave. Yes, Toti interview. Hey, Ben, what's going on? 
Karim says he's making good shawar- uh, shawarma. Maybe Mancini is hungry. <laughs> Zaniola will be there. Hungary is pretty close to Turkey uh, to support his old friends. Please, Ibanez, no mistakes. Al Sharawi filled Zaniola's role pretty good, I have to say. Yeah, Al Sharawi should have been called up. I mean, if we're going to go down that road, best way for Ibanez to be mistake free is to keep him on the bench. All right, well, you know what, guys, we got to support him nonetheless. Whoever takes the field, uh, it's you know, I know it gets almost easy to criticize players, but you got to keep energy right right now, and you got to support the boys. And I see people throw hate on the strikers or whatever player Abanez on social media out of the final. I'm like, yo, you know that if a striker, if a player comes across that on social media, like, what are you doing? What are you putting out there? Like, don't put that stuff out there. Don't try to take our own Roma's own players out of the game mentally by seeing something silly online. Like, it's not fair. Everyone's entitled to post what they want online, but honestly, don't do that stuff. Let's stop. Samuel says SPQR sounds like a programming language. <laughs> no, it's it's Suscus Paquis uh, Romanus. Uh, yeah, Ibanez only makes mistakes in the derby. Tries too hard with Lazio, maybe whatever. But no more talk about Ibanez's mistakes because we have to keep the energy a certain direction, and we gotta truly think that just whoever goes out there, pray and hope for the best, and keep that energy good because Roma need to be perfect to be. Six-time winners of the Europa League. A team that's hungry, that's got Ocampos and Papu Gomez and good players all around. If we look at this predicted lineup right now, which is going to be pretty accurate. These are good players, guys. Fernando Rakitic, quality on this side. They don't deserve to be in 11th. They probably merit, they're probably quality is of a team that's much higher. Here we are. It's game time. Okay, a couple more comments. Here we got Karim coming up. Uh, okay. Um, one or two more comments. We'll keep it or a couple more minutes. As long as stuff keeps coming in, I'm going to go to check to make sure nothing else has come in. In the meantime, uh, on the news outlets, 55, 54,000 tickets have been sold for the Stadio Olimpico, by the way, which is hosting a viewing party. <laughs> uh, Ancelotti says Roma can win with Mourinho on the bench. <laughs> I don't know what I'm reading something that Suso said something about Dragon Ball Z. I, I'm not, I'm not going to go down that road right now, but that would, it's going to be really cool. That viewing party at the Olympico. So we know them. Does he get in? I think that's another question. You know what we didn't talk about is Monchi <laughs> is Monchi. So Monchi's when, what year is he? If I look up Monchi Sevilla, I'm going to look at his Wikipedia uh, before I, I just want to give you some accurate facts about when he joined Roma. That was 2016, I believe. No, April 2017. Signed a four-year contract and then returned to Spain in 2019. I wish I could get some players, for instance, that he signed. And he put Roma in a hole that they've had to climb back with through the years with bad signings like Enzonzi, players that just cost so much on transfer fees and salaries that put Roma, a team which is always seesawing between the red line and profitability, and with financial financial fair play hanging over it, he really did a number on the club. So this is also an opportunity to get back to him as well. What about Anthony Taylor? Um, Oh, yeah, who's the ref? Anthony Taylor, yeah. Should be good. Should be good, Anthony Taylor. He's always done a pretty good job. Um, same for Rui. They get way too much hate. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know why fans put this stuff out on social media. Like, what are you gonna gain from that? Some some following of people who are like, Yeah, these guys suck. What is I don't understand. I don't know why fans do it. And I see other channels and it's this like shock content. I'm not gonna name names. I don't need to go there, but it's all about like riling up fans it's tabloid journalism it's not journalism it's tabloids it's clickbait stuff it's in order to get uh revenue from advertisers and to grow your audience but that's not the right way because why because it destabilizes platforms even if you're not talking about the actual team it just puts out a bad air out there and through my life i have wanted that to really change around roma because the club deserves better And whether they're not doing it properly and going out there and squishing things in the media or it's just perpetuating on social media, it's not a good thing. 
Uh, can you show Anthony Taylor a picture? Someone said he is the ref. Yeah. Should we start Dybala or bring him in the second half? My opinion, Mike, is to bring on Dybala in the second half for one reason in that he hasn't played in a long time. He's going to be rusty. Two, he's an ace up Mourinho's sleeve. And I think that three, he's better coming on in the second half where if Roma are in an emergency situation, he can play either scoring by, you know, getting into a goal scoring action and then play into extra time and then ultimately penalty kicks. If you start him, there's no way that he's going to be able to go for 120 minutes plus penalties. But yeah, let's take a look at Anthony Taylor uh, real quick. My voice is starting to go. Like at any time I get to like the 35, 40 minute mark, my um, my voice starts to give out. It's a bad allergy season here in, in New Jersey, New York area. So yeah, and only if we don't score. I just saw that comment come in. So let's check out his bio a little bit. 1978. So he's got 12 years on me at yeah, 44. He's from Manchester. Uh, the guy's been around the block and I think you'll definitely recognize him when you see him here. So <laughs> I like that kid's parka in the back. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> I like that. Look, it's pretty funny. I wear, I got a similar jacket. Um, okay. Listed as one of the six English officials to oversee matches at the world cup. So guy's got a lot of time, a lot of games under his belt. Um, let's look at his yellow cards. Here we go. Total, um, 44. What is this? Uh, okay. So he's refereed 44 games last season, 165 yellow cards. He came in. That's, uh, just under four per game. Interesting red cards per game. Not many. So he really likes to let it play. It seems, but that's pretty cool. I'm glad we looked at that little Anthony Taylor shout. <laughs> We're going to need him to be, to do a good job. All right. So guys, uh, write in your comments, leave a lot of, a lot of love, throw in some comments, uh, some likes there, subscribe. If you haven't joined this channel officially, uh, what else do we got? Any cool banners that I could show you? Look at that one. Look at that. Look at the boys. Wouldn't that be great from Palermo to Roma and then to a Europa league final Europa league gold. Wouldn't that be cool? I know I got a little lag right now. I could see it coming over, uh, that I really hope for. That would be super sweet. Here we go. It's game time. Any other good stuff? Any other any other uh, things we're forgetting? Pellegrini, we need a captain's performance from him for sure. We need everybody to go out there and do their thing, though. Rui, Rui's blocking me out. A couple more comments coming in. Thanks for the picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get you on the USL championship scene. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. I'm down for anything. By the way, if anyone knows like an uncle who has a business, maybe like a wine business or, uh, I don't know, football, trading cards, whatever, if you want to sponsor this channel too, let me know. If you know someone who's trying to start their business, uh, then, you know, just let a brother know. Wayne.Gerard10 at Gmail, or you can leave a comment and we can get, uh, we can get in touch that way. What's the Roma Foxy face? <laughs> what is the Foxy face? Is it that one up there on the left? Speaking to the mic, my uh, my banner. That's funny, Sam. Sam's a funny guy here. Uh, what else? Do you like this too? Do you like my little um st stream starting soon thing? I thought that was cool. I put that together uh, recently, about a week ago. What else? I think that's it, guys. I think we're going to wrap up here. Uh, like I said, send this to your Roma, your Roma friends. Yes, the wolf. The wolf is ready to hunt. Send this to your Romanisti pals. Let them know we got a good YouTube channel going on here. We got a great community. A lot of people joining in, um, throwing in comments. This is great. It's great we could have these talks. So, game tomorrow. We're gonna go over a little bit more about the press stuff. I'm not sure if that's gonna be live or recorded. Probably live. And Wednesday is it, man. If Roma win, I'll be streaming live from Roma Club New York. If they lose, I will be talking after, after the match, like sometime later that night, and. I will not be happy. You will not be happy. But given that win, that win, we will be having a really nice stream, I think, with a lot of people. And I really want to show everyone what it's like. There's going to be two, over 200 people at Roma Club New York. Uh, what if Roma score first? Well, there's a nice big Pullman, nice big bus that we should park right in front of that. Thank you. Thanks, Karim. All right, guys. We'll talk then. Ciao.